Hello, welcome from Trend Signal for our review of the data and events the week beginning the 19th of September. Uh, public holiday uh, in uh, Japan on the first day of the uh, week, respect for the aged day. Not sure how I feel about that. Um, it is uh, a key week, however, for central banks, um, stock markets in general, excluding obviously the Nikkei because it is a holiday on Monday. Uh, Stock markets in general are quite positive, uh, FTSE especially, uh, significantly higher first thing. Uh, it's a little more optimistic ahead of these key meetings. Uh, before we look at those, let's just have a quick review of what happened last week. Uh, stock markets were a little bit on the defensive, especially uh, the DAX, for example, where uh, a few alarm bells were ringing uh, for, uh, with the Deutsche Bank regarding news that the Department of Justice in the U.S. is uh, intending to fine them $14 billion uh, for their part in the mortgage uh, back securities uh, debacle and uh, the ensuing financial crisis. The stock was hit hard, fell from around 13 euros to sub uh, 12 euros. Uh, I think uh, the fact of the matter is uh, they've got a market cap of around 18 billion euros and with a fine of $14 billion where they've only provided for five suggests that uh, uh, they might have uh, some problems there. Of course, Goldman Sachs got hit with a roughly the same number and ended up negotiating a, a fine of around $5 billion. The question is, uh, will the Apple um, move by the European Union affect the Department of uh, Justice's attitude to that? Uh, time will tell. Uh, the Nikkei last week, 446 points uh, to the worse. Uh, really, uh, market nerves ahead of these uh, meetings this week, specifically the Bank of Japan, obviously, um, and what may happen there. Uh, more about that in a second. Um, other than that, uh, news last week, uh, Sterling was a big fall, uh, falling 260-odd points. Um, through the week, certainly towards the end of the week, that is, following uh, the Bank of England uh, minutes from Thursday's meeting uh, with a reference to further rate cut if conditions continue, as mentioned in the August minutes. Um, certainly caught the markets by surprise there, falling sub at 130, although the market is uh, back up above that level for now. Um, so let's have a look at um, what's due out this week. As I say, the key focus of attention really is uh, the uh, two main meetings uh, and let's have a first look at uh, Wednesday morning it's in fact it's all happening on Wednesday the Bank of Japan although there's no time mentioned even the Bank of Japan website um, I think they mention it or it's, it's uh, released as soon as when they finished their meeting uh, but it doesn't have an exact time uh, but the pol policy statement will be followed up by a press conference uh, and it's quite an interesting meeting this week. If anything, it's possible it could grab more attention than the Federal Reserve's uh, meeting, um, the results of that at 7 o'clock in the evening on Wednesday. Uh, but the governor of the Bank of Japan um, will be listened to very carefully um, because he's also releasing the results of their review of their own um, stimulus program because there's been a lot of criticism, especially since January when they imposed negative rates, which was very unpopular. Uh, and the finance industry has really been lobbying hard against uh, the Bank of Japan uh, increasing these negative rates. So um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Possibly further QE uh, is um, built into expectations. Um, uh, and as I say, uh, I, I think it's likely that uh, they may well end up doing something uh, that may uh, help shield some of the bank's profits from the effect of negative rates, which is uh, certainly one of the unintended consequences of negative rates. Uh, we then move on to um, the main event of the week, really. Uh, it's been discussed until we're blue in the face. Uh, central bank uh, largesse um, continues to be the main talking point with all the markets, uh, really. Um, and obviously, the Federal Reserve being the largest central bank uh, in the world, or the, or the central bank for the largest economy in the world, I should say, uh, really carries the most um, focus. Uh, we're expecting uh, uh, no change in rates. The consensus uh, is for no change, maintaining uh, the rate between 25 and 50 basis points. But the Fed, but the um, Chicago Mercantile Exchange uh, Fed Watch tool has got expectations for September at just 12%, although I think the risk is probably greater than 12% in terms of what could actually happen. Um, but I think um, the consensus is fairly clear. December is the likely target, likely date when rates will be uh, pushed higher, uh, where we've got 45% expecting a 25 basis point hike. And um, the other 
nine percent really following carrying on from uh, those in uh, September who think there's going to be a rate hike then so uh, um, that is the preferred one and in fact um, market watch um, have identified that uh, interest rate hikes in September would actually break with the US central bank's tradition of no surprise tightening during an election year and that's according to an economist at Goldman Sachs um, but I suspect they'll probably um, uh, hold off, which is uh, the consensus, as I say, and make uh, encouraging noises uh, about the economy. And this is something that the Fed has referred to uh, uh, and in anticipation of perhaps uh, the third quarter earnings season, which will um, kick off in October, and that's likely to stir the markets up again. But um, any uh, failure to raise rates, I think, will be treated quite positively by the markets, uh, with the dollar probably slipping um, in response as well. Um, other than that, this uh, week uh, we have uh, further central bank uh, <laughs> uh, comment intervention, call it will you, what you will. On Thursday, we've got uh, the president of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, speaking at 2 uh, p.m. Uh, we also have our own uh, governor, um, Mr. Mark Carney, speaking at 6 o'clock in the evening. Both those events uh, obviously will be closely followed, and quite rightly, they're given high importance by Forex Factory. Other than that, um, that's pretty much it for the week. Uh, thanks very much for listening. Bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, TrendSignal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the TrendSignal website for the latest events and to book your free place.